Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today for this In Conversation, which is the final part in a series of videos which were produced to summarize and unpack everything that was kind of created and, and discussed as part of the Rendering Utopias intensive course, which was delivered at the CCI in early 2023. And today I'm joined by one of the wonderful participants, Akriti, who I'm going to let introduce themselves properly. Hi, I'm Akriti and I'm studying a master's in user experience design at LCC, which is one of the colleges under UAL. Amazing. Thank you. I'm so happy to have you with me today to talk about the course. And um, I wanted to begin by by asking you your your thoughts on AI kind of since completing the course. I think for everyone listening, it's, it's really important to highlight that, that by this kind of perfect storm, the course took place within the the weeks that ChatGPT kind of felt like it was taking over the world. And, you know, we all uh, joke that we had this kind of extra participant in the room. And um, since the since the course happened, we've really kind of seen this conversation around AI kind of enter the broader public consciousness in a way it hasn't before. So, yeah, I want to begin by asking you how you feel about AI now. I think I think it's um, going to be diplomatic about this. But uh, I think it, there is hope in ways that it's helping us, definitely. And I mean, yeah, it's speeding up things and it's making things easier. But then I feel like that ease and that speeding up is only happening for a section of society and not for the rest of the world and the human population. And if we are just going to kind of live in that bliss that the people who have access to technology and the higher section of society is like now, you know, benefiting from this boom in the tech industry, then it's kind of like ignorance is bliss kind of a situation then, because there's so many people who still don't have access to technology, let alone AI. And I don't know, like, are, are they benefiting from this? Or is it just that like, you know, the case of richer become richer and poorer become poorer. And then there's just like this, technological inequality in the world yeah we spoke a lot we spoke a lot about this on on the course right that that that, that certain advancements in technology disproportionately affect underdeveloped nations in, in in really negative ways and you know we discussed the shift towards electric cars and the dependency on lithium batteries and the way that this creates um both social and environmental degradation in in countries like Bolivia and Chile. And I was just reading, I'm probably paraphrasing here, but I was just reading that for every kind of 20 to 50 questions you ask ChatGPT, that uses about 500 mils of water and cooling systems. So when you think about that fact in relation to the fact, in the relation that there are about a billion users, it becomes really quite a lot. And I think something that we really focused on in the final days of the course was was developing projects that kind of challenged and exposed some of these problems and in, in power structures. So I wondered if you could share some of the projects that you worked on. Um, so I was involved in like the moldable tech and trying to see how instead of us molding around the way tech has progressed, how maybe tech can mold around the way humans function and like the human body. So something like more organic shapes and forms um there were also like a couple of projects that couldn't be completed on that day that are i would still call them work in progress but uh one was to do with conversations amongst tech companies and what that would look like if they were humanized in some way and uh, the other one was about like um throwing a light on essentially self-healing tech and what that could look like but in a very speculative sense essentially um like you know having a little like hospital bed for like a phone and like with like a drip attached through wires and so some sort of thing like that but like to kind of explain how they've become such an integral part of our life that uh they also kind of need a life support sort of thing i guess yeah i th I, th I think for me something that i found so interesting about the projects that you were all working was the way that you try to introduce this concept of kind of of a tactility of or a humanity into technology but we also spoke about 
the kind of risks of that. So I'm curious how you kind of feel about that that kind of practice now. People have been trying to make AI itself more human, sound more human, be more, I don't know, have more emotion and like all those things. And I feel like that's a little like, I don't know, on the borderline that do you want to make tech sound human or do you want humans to enter like, you know, to have direct input with tech. So I think that's a very blurry line that it's becoming almost uh I'm not sure where we are headed. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that's the thing, right? I think we discussed this also during the course, this idea that the certain voice assistants like Alexa, they failed because of their inability to hold a, a nuanced conversation. So I'm curious how you relate to the interactions that we're having with AI. Um, like, are you hyperly aware that you're talking to a machine? Because for me, I think, I think at times the illusion can feel really strong and it, it does feel like you're talking to someone or something. So, yeah, I'm curious how you, how you relate to that. I think uh, up till now, I've really tried to have a clear separation in my mind that this is not real. Although I attended a workshop recently on AI and sentient beings, which threw light on a certain issue, which is that before we tell ourselves logically that this is a machine and that we should not have emotional connect to it instinctively as humans we already have an emotional connect to it before we can like logically control that and it's not possible to really control emotions so it's like in a complicated mix it's almost as if like you know you're gonna say uh, good morning to like your Alexa every morning or something like that and then one day supposedly it stops working and then are you going to miss your voice assistant so there's some sort of emotional connect already even without you wanting it so I guess uh, as much as I try to have a very mechanical conversation with this machine it's there are limits to it yeah I mean I think I think it's really interesting what you're saying that it's almost it's almost impossible to not have an emotional connection simply by the virtue that you're having a conversation and because having a conversation is an emotional act and in relation to the kind of social and ethical implications of technology which we at Feminist Internet and, and CCI have been kind of interrogating for a long time I think what's often forgotten within that within that matrix is the emotional impact of technologies and at the end of the day the the social and ethical implications of technologies are having an impact on our emotions both now and they will continue to in the future. And, and you only have to kind of look at social media, which which is run on algorithms. You know, it's having an impact on the way that we feel physically and emotionally, particularly on young people. And when we're discussing these tools in the kind of public sphere and tech sphere, I think they're given this kind of utopian narrative of of, of technological and societal advancement. So I'm curious how you relate to the concept of the utopia now that the course is over because obviously this was the kind of primary line of inquiry within the course but equally we discussed so much that the, this concept of utopia is to some degree futile so yeah I'm, I'm curious how you relate to it now I think like from the course literally named rendering utopias I think what I personally felt in line with was that learning the word prototopia and like the conversations we had around it um but going forward i guess it's a lot about like we even i think discussed uh in the course about the future cone and like what are possible and uh plausible futures and all of that and i've, I've thought a lot about that uh since then and i guess there is uh credit to the fact that like speculating futures of technology help us also kind of understand the implications of it or like the you know the negative side or the dark side of uh, progressing with things this fast and I think like AI is at least progressing like super fast like every day there's something new so um, it's it's also tough to keep up to speed for people within and especially outside of this and I don't know, like, it definitely, I think it's early to say if it's 
uh, utopian or dystopian because i don't know because a lot of things you understand better in hindsight and a lot of things you understand better in like when you're looking back at that oh that time chat gpt came out and this is what it's done to us and that's how things used to be right now all of us are just kind of living in the glory of like discovering something new and like trying something new out and i guess like five years down the line we'll just all have the answer to whether it was a utopic decision or a dystopic one yeah but i think i think what you highlight is this thing we discuss really in depthly this idea of 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 possible futures of plural futures the idea that that, that like incremental changes lead towards so many different potential outcomes and i think that while the conversation around ai and technology can to some degree get really dystopian that's not to say that ai and technology cannot have a positive impact on the world and you know the intention behind so many of the projects that you were working on and with with the other participants they place technology and ai in this kind of like positively affecting position and and that's what it takes it takes more people like you working with technology and using it in, in a positive way and in an ethical way so i'm curious kind of like what you're working on now and at the moment and how you've kind of taken taken the learning forward so we are actually working on um, designing a reverse turing test so we are trying to understand uh, how ai functions and or how machines function rather and trying basically the as the aim of the project is that a human should be able to pass as an ai and what requires a human to have to do to pass as an ai and what might be like a real life scenario or a speculative scenario where we might have to do that because as of now it's like us uh, ai hopefully is not passing as a human but then you know the other way around um so that's something i'm working on so we are talking a lot about like ethics of ai and like uh, how that relates to the emotions and behavior of humans and how that ends up affecting and all of that but i think uh, doing that course definitely got me more interested in like ai and how that's kind of affecting humans and how it's kind of entered the world and things like that but also like thinking about futures and like how to render them more appropriately in a way um so since after that i've i went for like an ai hackathon and things and uh, doing an ai project right now so i think that was like a kickstarter course for me oh I'm so i'm so glad that it really has like kickstarted something for you that's yeah that makes me so happy um i'm curious if there's like something that like really really stayed with you or something that you feel like you really took away with you or or learned like specifically after kind of going through the process with everyone one of the things that i found really helpful that you shared with us on the course was this one video you shared with us about like how ai works i think you played it for us and i think that on a very personal level helped me a lot because i think for me ai was like this invisible magic entity and then to actually like bring it on the table and say you know this is how it's actually working behind the curtains is very like eye opening and helpful because then i'm like okay it's it's just this it's not like magic so it's a little grounding to know that it's just human information kind of collated and put out to you in a concise form um, so yeah i think that's that video has kind of stayed with me for a bit i was so glad that resonated because i think i think so often like technology and specifically ai it's kind of as you said like it's this wizard of oz thing where you know it's operating behind the curtain or it's shrouded in secrecy but actually when you break it down in a in a simplistic digestible way ai is it's information being fed into a system aggregated to produce an outcome and i i know that's a reductive way to to look at it and describe it but these are really complex technologies and and we need to be able to understand them simplistically because they are impacting everyone and i think for me that's another reason why i i really really enjoy being a part of the intensives because they have to be designed in a way that you don't need any prior knowledge to kind of to take part in the course and 
you know, everyone who arrives there, while some people come with, you know, understandings or, or different experiences and different knowledge, because of the way that it's structured, we all start on the same ground. And that's what helps us to kind of create these really, really beautiful, complex outcomes where everyone's ideas are kind of brought together. And that's, I wanted to to ask you how you found that process of of being in the room with, with everyone, with all these kind of different people and different perspectives. And um, because it's not really the the normal format that we follow. I think it was one of the best experiences I've had in college because it's so nice to meet people from other colleges and it's so nice to like, everyone has like different bits and pieces to like give and like everyone has these inputs and it's super interesting to like just meet new people but also like hear what they're doing at college, what their course is like and if, you know, in your course, it's like people, like you said, like have similar skill sets or like have a similar way of thinking because you've been doing that same course for a while and then you develop that similar way of thinking. But then it's like here, like there's so many different perspectives and so many different like skill sets and uh, experiences. And I think it was just amazing. I think every time, everyone just loved it. And like you should have seen how happy everyone was eating summer rolls on the last day because everyone was just like super happy at being around each other and like, it was a little sad that it ended, but I'm I'm happy that I had that experience. It was really nice. Oh, thank you. That really, yeah, yeah, that really, really means a lot. Um, so yeah, I just want to I want to say this, say thank you so much for your, for your contributions and, and your participation and for being here for today. And yeah, it really, it really does mean a lot. And it's it was really such a privilege to to run this course with you and with everyone else. And um, I think it's probably a really really good place to to wrap up and yeah I just want to say thank you to you and to everyone who's listening and um if you haven't already I'd really encourage you to check out some of the other videos and um, that are featured as part of this course on the CCI YouTube channel we have um a showcase of the entire course and interviews with different participants and a look at some of the projects that they created as well as a lecture delivered by me which was originally um part of the course and, and talks about the kind of relationship that we have with technology both historically and in in the future um and yeah i just want to say thank you so much again to your party for for being here and uh, everyone for listening thank you so so much thank you so much goodbye this was very nice speaking to you love to have a chat and yeah i hope we can take some of the work in progress projects further thank you thank you again and thank you for listening and yeah we'll see you later bye-bye